Hi there, it's time for an unboxing video. So as you can see, this did not come from uh, any place that I think sp speaks English um, as their first language. This actually is a package that came from Hungary, as you cannot tell perhaps from this these stamps. Um, and of course there's some of that standard white paper. 37 and 11, I keep seeing those numbers, not sure why. Uh, some other bits of the actual packaging. And it says here, quite interestingly, if you can read sideways, open here, and the same thing in different languages that I do not understand, but probably say something along the lines of open here. So, let's get this trusty comb, or brush thing, and open this up. Now this is a package that came from eBay, And I have a good guess of what this is, but let me look inside. And yes, it surely is. Free packaging. That's awesome. Okay, this is not what I ordered. Uh, if I flip it over, this is what I did order. It's the Hungarian rings, double ring. And if you go around, it says here, 10 trillion variations. Patent pending. So this is... Um, I guess the original, oh, it says here four colors, the original Hungarian rings puzzle. And if I am incorrect and this is actually a very convincing knockoff, please let me know. But without further ado, I think I'll open this up here. So as you can see, there's uh, stickers on the side here. And I can start peeling this one off. Yeah, Really old glue here. Um, Let's see if there's any other way of opening it. Uh, you can see some suspicious um, tape here that's been overlapped a bit. Now when I ordered this on eBay... Alright, just tear it up, I guess. When I ordered this on eBay, the seller had multiple... Uh, a, a few of these, not just one. So my guess is either this is a reproduction or it could possibly be that he bought a lot of stock thinking that he'd sell them in the future. Or maybe he really is a shop owner who just couldn't sell these things in Hungary. So let's keep going here. Some things to note that it has uh, cracks here. So either this is really cheap plastic or it's uh, the plastic that was used a long time ago so it's gotten weaker or it's maybe it's the best quality plastic that was available in that time since I did not grow up in the 80s I have no idea well I guess I have a, a guess an educated guess but with that further ado uh, and the ruin ruin tape we finally have access to this puzzle. Ooh. Let me put that aside. As you can see, there are extra bonus things. You have a, a sticker, which is a bit warped here for some reason. Ooh, and you can rip it open like that, and you can apply the sticker anywhere, on your car perhaps. And here you have some instructions on paper, as you can see. You can see some states that the puzzle might end up in. And actually it looks like different positions you can aim for. You could have uh, mixed colors here, perfectly mixed. You could have them in multiple, four colors there. And, uh, well, uh, you can group them in alternating colors. And same thing here. I think that's the position this is in right here, or something similar. And if you were to open it up all the way, here we go. It is not in English, sadly. So it's all in Hungarian. Well, Hungarian rings is in English, amazingly, interestingly. And there are different positions to uh, try to get to, as you can see here. Quite interesting. So, with this very nice case, which I guess could be a display case if I tidy it up and put the... Put the uh, Remove the tape, I guess, to make it look more streamlined. Let's jump into the puzzle. Now, as you can see, 
it hasn't scrambled on its way here, and that's because there's a bit of tape, uh, I guess paper tape or ticker tape that I'll remove right now. Oh, it's not just paper, it's actually made of plastic. I think that was a good mighty, a good step for them to do. And let's see if I can get this out. Oh, yep. I was going to grab some tweezers, but uh, I got the plastic out. Now you have the balls ready to move. Now let's see, uh, we have four colors. We have a sort of fuchsia, if I'm saying that right. Not magenta, fuchsia, in, or red if you prefer. Uh, dandelion shade of yellow, a little bit uh, richer in yellow than might appear. You have a nice space black and you have what appears to be um, a combination of ocean and sky blue. It's actually a little bit darker than appears in the viewfinder at the moment. But without further ado, let's do first turns. Oh, first slides I guess. Whoop, okay, it's a bit tricky here. Okay, as you can see, you need to get a good grip on the puzzle. And it does rotate like that. And if you go on the left side, you can also rotate the beads around like that. It's a little bit looser on the left side than on the right. Oh, no, no. That's yeah, quite fine. So one, one flaw, I guess, in this puzzle, or what makes it hard to control, is that because these are beads or spheres, they tend to roll, so you cannot just slide the whole thing. You have to get a good um, grip into it, stick your finger in uh, between the two balls, and rotate the whole thing around. As you can see, you have sort of like a Venn diagram, where you have, where you have two circles of beads, and they uh, intersect on two points. And with that, you can start mixing beads up by rotating the two circles. Not at the same time, of course. Um, almost at the same time. Uh, let's see the rest of the body. Here we go. Copyright 1982. So I guess this really is um, an old re um, an old ma mass-produced puzzle. It says EPAP. I'm not sure what that means. Patent pending. I'm pretty... Wow. Well, I must apologize for my camera. Like a toddler, it became full. So I switched out memory card and we're back again. And as you can see, we have the puzzle still. So yes, it does appear to be the original puzzle. It says your copyright 1982 and still patent pending. I'm pretty sure it pended. And it has a very nice, interesting uh, off-white um, body of the puzzle. And you can see there's bits of um, non-smooth bits of the puzzle, if I can say that. It's probably from the molding process. And, um, or actually, I think that's to keep it um, a little bit sturdier for this division part here, as you can see. But it does feel to be one solid bit of plastic, or no, actually not. You can see bits of, uh, there you go. You could see a split in the plastic, so it was probably molded in two pieces. And you might be able to catch a seam right there. There you go. But uh, overall, this is a very interesting puzzle. And uh, before the end of this review, I shall solve it. But let's scramble it up first, and then I'll be right back with a more in-depth review. So you can see it scrambles really quickly already. With some struggle. I must say, I really like this color scheme. Um, in a lot of magic trick sets that you get, they tend to go for the primary colors. So this is not out of my uh, comfort zone. And black goes very nicely with these primary colors. Oh, problem with alignment there. Like that. Now before the day is out, I should get used to the scrambling for this. Now it could very be 
Um, because um, I'm not holding it horizontally like this, and I'm holding it tilted that the beads are a little bit more hesitant to move. Gravity, why you do this to us? Okay. Okay, I'll call the scramble, and let's see what it looks like when it's solved. Alrighty, I've been puzzling away at this for a few days now, and I have learned a lot about solving this puzzle. And also, I have a lot of good things to say about it. So first of all, the body of the puzzle is very smooth in terms of the shape, and especially when they molded it, you could see a, uh, a bit of a seam here, if I were to, there you go. You could see a seam of the puzzle, so the body of this was uh, made in two parts at least, and the way they finish it off, or the way they molded it, molded it, it's very smooth and it does not really cut into your hand at all. Uh, there might be a few exceptions of it being smooth, uh, because this was made, I believe, by injection molding. And uh, with that in mind, there's always going to be a part where you injected the plastic into it, its mold. And uh, in this case, it was right here. If you were to look closer, there you go. There's a bit of a hole there, um, and that's because a bit of plastic would stick out when you remove the puzzle part from its mold and they'd have to break that off and try to make it as flat as possible but it will always be irregular sadly but overall it is very uh, nice and smooth um, you can see a bit of the uh, the flash I guess or the part where the balls were in, made by injection molding by looking at the lighter ball here like a yellow one if I were to go closer, you could see a bit of discoloration right there. So that would be the spot where a bit of plastic would stick out when you remove the bit from the mold. And they'd have to uh, trim it down or do something. But it's actually very smooth in, at that part. So I believe they, they were very careful in how they um, finished the, the piece there. So with that done, uh, I did not mention yet that this is made of colored plastic. The uh, body itself is a bit off-white and it's a very nice comforting shade, not very hard to the eyes. And the colors themselves are very rich in terms of color. Um, it does appear to be made of colored plastic as well uh, with four different colors as you can see, uh, unless you're colorblind. I'm sorry for you. Uh, black, red, blue, and yellow. Now. I would call this a stickerless puzzle if it weren't for this. Yes, sadly, uh, this is called the Hungarian rings puzzle, but really there is only one topologically, as the other ring is filled in, just for the sake of a sticker. Come on, guys, you could have made maybe a little emboss, uh, embossment of copyright 1982, patent pending, made in Hungary, but uh, I'm not complaining. Well, actually I am, because my hands tend to be very clammy, and sadly, even a little bit of moisture on this sticker, by holding it like this or something, will eventually ruin and destroy this puzzle, uh, or at least its sticker, which is almost completely its uh, identity. So, I have to hold on to the only edge or end of the puzzle, so to avoid uh, evaporated sweat onto that because there does not seem to be any plastic covering or coating on that, like uh, is typical for uh, Rubik's Cube stickers, or at least before they came up with the new Rubik's Cube. Yeah. But let's uh, go into how this works mechanically. So, as you can see, there is a bit of wiggle room between the balls. If you were to look at the black ones right now, over there at the top, there is a small gap there that I can wiggle a couple of balls around. Uh, but the thing about this is that uh, it gives it a lot of leeway and it doesn't get really stiff in terms of working it or using the puzzle. Now, uh, interestingly enough, uh, when I first opened this, I tried to ram my finger in so I could get a good rotation or rotate it there. But there's a lot of grinding and you're fighting against a lot of friction. Oddly enough, just like the wheels of a bicycle, if you roll your thumb over top of the balls so that they, were ro they will roll, you use friction for you, so it actually works much better if you do that, which is great. But the problem is you have to move your, your thumb twice the distance that you need uh, that if you 
than if you were to ram your finger in like that. And that's just geometry. Um, also, I mentioned the gap there, but if you rotate one circle only partly, so that in the intersection there is no single ball there, you get an extra large gap between the balls like that, which really uh, shows how much room you get when you're working with this. Now, um, even though it has all that wiggle room, it still jams once in a while. Uh, I did mention that this is a, a good technique for using the puzzle, uh, rolling your thumb over top like that. Oh, there we go, we have one jam already, as you can see. So uh, if you look closely on the intersection, you'll notice this red ball is not perfectly centered in the intersection. So that is a problem. This does have alignment issues, and uh, it's actually easily fixed if you were to be very careful in how you center the intersection balls before you switch circles, or cycles, if you prefer. I forgot how this went now. No! There we go. So this brings me to the next part, um, the solutions. Now, the most basic and most um, intuitive solution for this puzzle is similar to the Rubik's Cube, where any piece that has the same color should be grouped together and not be separated, which is basically what I have right here. Now, when I tried solving this puzzle, I gave up and I came and came looking for the solution. I went only so far as to group two of the colors of beads and I got stuck with the two others being scrambled like crazy. So I did look up a simple algorithm for solving this and I got bored. But then again, I looked back at the instructions and I saw that there were numerous solutions. I thought it would be easy to solve but I found out I needed to come up with at least a couple other techniques and strategies for solving them. Um, one other thing about this puzzle is that uh, is I guess the the ball count. There are 18 balls here, not 20. Um, there is 20 balls that go into one circle, but because there is an intersection between the two circles, you have only uh, 38 balls instead of 40. I think I might have said it wrong uh, a second ago. Now, number of balls of each color is much different. You have 10 red balls, 10 black balls, but only 9 blue and 9 yellow, which is kind of interesting. And it does lead to some uh, symmetries that you'll need to figure out in the future. But nevertheless, let's get into scrambling this and solving it again. Alrighty, this looks pretty much scrambled, and now I can just solve it. So as you can see, um, there's a bit of groupings already forming, and right now I am trying to form the red uh, section of the puzzle.
Okay, there's the red section solved. Now let's get the black section here. Alrighty, so next off I need to get the intersection balls, these two, to be of different colors. One blue, one yellow, as I've just done. And line up the uh, two solved sections, the black and red sections, so that they are touching the intersection at two different intersections, I guess. Um, so now there's an algorithm for switching two balls, one in this section and one in this section. And I can do the same thing on the other side. Though I tend to flip the puzzle over because I'm used to only one perspective when solving this. So let's, let's let me go ahead and solve this part. Now that is an interesting position there. I uh, hmm. Alrighty, so there's a solved solution of the well. Here's a solved solution or solved state for the puzzle. And uh, yes, due to symmetries of this puzzle, you could flip this around here and you'd have a different solution or not because the body of the puzzle also changes. Um, and of course you could flip this many different ways and it would solve the same way. Uh, but then again, it's hard to switch it at least um, while uh, knowing exactly what you're doing. I just tend to find the best way or the first case that uh, these two intersection balls are different and I just go for it like that. But without further ado, I'm going to try going for some of the other solutions here. So first off, I'm going to do this one. So at this part, I'm going to start uh, going to other solved states, but if you do not want to see it, click on the annotation to skip. There was a jam. Alrighty, I need to switch these two somehow. stuck. Or not. Okay. Alright, this is the state that brings us right to 
the solved position like that. And that's this one. As you can see. Alrighty, let's transition and we will go into the next solved states. Alrighty, so from this position I'm going to try to get to this one, as you can see. Which will create the illusion of uh, link linked rings. So let's see what I can do here. Uh, first I'm going to try to bring it back to its original solved state. So. Alrighty, so this is a tad bit of a problem right here. I need to switch these two. Um, Alrighty. Flip it around again. Alright, it's solved once again. So let's try and do this. Alrighty. And there we go, we have uh, what appears to be linked rings, which is this one. Um, I think this is one of the nicer ones, which has a surprising way of uh, solving it. You have to know the state it has to look like when it's like this, so that when you center it up again, it looks like that, which is a bit tricky. Alrighty, let's go to another one. Uh, this time I'll try going for the uh, one with with mixed rings like that. Now, something to note here, as you can see, this mixed ring is complete and this one is broken. So this one would require using only the beads that has 10 of each color. So that would mean I have to mix the black and red beads and the other ones will be yellow and blue. So let's go for that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay then, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Alrighty, here's my favorite part. So if you uh, got here, uh, this is not uh, going to be a uh, sad thing, this is going to be a very interesting thing. You have this line here and you, this line here and you want to somehow get it into a full circle. Well, just do this. And now you have an entire circle there. So let me rotate this around and I'm going to try solving this part now. Uh, 
Another interesting technique I learned is that if you uh, switch balls around, um, always keep a gap of four uh, correct beads and only use four pockets. One here, one here, one here, and one here for switching out beads on the other circle, like I'm doing right now. And as you can see, it's solved. Now I'm going to go out of my way and actually make it not solved for a very spe special reason. I found that if two of the beads end up being swapped here, um, you have to uh, do a, a few things. Um, not freak out, but try to figure out some way to solve that, and I actually found the way. So I'm going to purposely make it not solved, and I will uh, show you how to undo it, which is basically the same set of moves. So here we go. Alrighty, so this was a common problem for me when I was trying to solve this before, and I ended up with two switched balls. So the way to solve this is to put the two balls that need to be switched on the intersections like so, and basically switch every single ball in here, in this special way. And just like that, it's solved. So that is probably the hardest, uh, uh, the hardest state that I've had trouble with. But then again, this was the first one I, uh, I did after the original version or original solution here. And finally, I will go for this one. So I find when you're here, it's easy to actually separate the colors again. So I will do that as a shortcut here. Alrighty, here comes the special move again to bring all of these red balls into this ball, uh, this circle. As you can see, if you try uh, getting them all in like this, you start dragging out the black balls as well from there. So, by reverse engineering uh, half of a circle and somehow bringing them out, I was able to figure out the way to do the opposite and bring half of a half of a circle all the way into one orbit, like so. You bring, or you have an arc here, and an arc here, and you want to have a gap of four, like that. And just by doing this move, you very nicely make a circle, just like that. And finally, of course, I'm going to try solving these ones now. And I'll try to do that quickly as I'm running out of battery.
Alrighty, interestingly enough, I need to switch these two and these two, which uh, should be simple. And there is a problem. Uh, it's not lined up properly, so what shall I do? After some randomly uh, switching about, I've got the final solved state that I will attempt today. And that's this one. Alrighty, overall this is a really great puzzle and I really suggest buying that because there are a bunch out there on eBay and some other puzzle shops. But uh, overall this has been great and I've learned a lot about this puzzle and I've enjoyed some of the alternate solutions. So this has been the Hungarian Rings, thanks for watching.